All right, look, we're going to continue the economic theme today, and we've just had Cameron Bagri, an independent economist, Cameron Bagri, and you would have heard in the news bulletin there, recession technically on its way. And consistently, and Cameron said this, the biggest issue and the biggest problem we face is not just skilled, but also unskilled worker shortages. There may be the capacity, the capability, businesses may be capable of getting back to post-COVID operation levels, but do they have the capacity to do that without the people to work for them? Um, and is the government, more importantly, is our government doing enough to solve that problem or ameliorate that problem? Uh, one group of people who say it isn't is the ACT Party, and uh, the immigration spokesperson, uh, Brooke Van Velden, joins us now. Brooke, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Oh, good morning, Sean. Thanks for having me here. But I, I do have to correct you. I'm not oh, the immigration oh, spokesperson. Oh, what are you? The, you're the what spokesperson? I'm the deputy leader. The data, okay. uh, but I do have a column in the Herald that was talking about yeah. immigration. This morning. All right. It is, it would seem to me, the most commonly mentioned problem in terms of business recovery and economic a activity, isn't it? There's just no doubt a shortage of people, skilled or unskilled, is a huge issue for this country right now. Oh, without question. I mean, we are facing businesses up and down the country begging for staff to be able to come into their businesses. And over the last few weeks, I've gone out and spoken to a number of them who want to get back to pre-COVID levels but they just can't do it because there's not enough people willing to work in our country to do that. You know, um, I've spoke to a company that employs temporary workers. You know, they say that if they manage to get another 100 people on their books, they'd be able to place them within 24 hours in companies in Auckland alone. Uh, and then you've got companies that, um, you know, they rely on people physically walking in through the door every day get, to get their production up and running, um, who say, you know, I've been trying to, to deal with the immigration department to try and build back to pre-COVID levels, and I just can't do it because it's taking so many, many months. And there's just an unnecessary layer of bureaucracy stopping businesses getting back to those pre-COVID levels. Okay, what are, give me two policy changes that the government could implement at reasonable cost and in a reasonable time frame that would start solving this problem right now? Well, it's easy. The first one you'd do is you would uh, look at the accredited employer work visa scheme, that's the current government policy, and say that you have to scrap the labour market test. Uh, that's the test that says, as a business, you have to prove that there's no workers in New Zealand who would be willing to do the job for you. So you've got people who are advertising for months and months and months, never getting any hits on any website, uh, having to prove to the government in an unprecedented labour market shortage that there's no one here to work. Uh, so the government's saying you have to spend money to advertise for people that we know aren't there before we'll let you get people who can work for you. Absolutely. That, that's what they're doing. And it's a huge frustration. People know that there's nobody wanting to work. Um, and at the meantime, they're having to reduce cafe and restaurant hours, uh, advertising for people that don't exist before immigration will allow them to find someone internationally. Um, and, you know, I talked to someone and they said, it's like the immigration department actually want to run our business. Um, it's really frustrating. They don't know how to run business, so they should get out of the okay, way. Okay, so that's one. Uh, okay, the the you know work and need test. What's the second policy you think would be able to turn this around relatively quickly? The second one is changing the green list for immigration. Mm. You know, there are awful lot of um, nurses and midwives that haven't been put on the fast track to residency. And we know talking to anyone who's in aged care, anyone in a hospital at the moment, we just don't have the nurses and we don't have the midwives. And yet the signal that we're sending to any midwife or nurse who's international at the moment is we don't want you here because Australia will give you a better deal uh, than you'll get in New Zealand. You can become a resident uh, overnight or you, you just end up on a list of people here, maybe one day becoming a resident, we don't know, but you're not seen as needed as other people on the green list. So we need to open up that uh, green list for residency to the midwives and the nurses so we can have that hospital care that we desperately need. Yeah, well, we need to open up to all sorts of people people, Brooke. 
Uh, Brooke, the thing about this problem, which I now just has emerged as the universal single biggest sort of impediment to economic growth activity, perhaps uh, more recovery and getting out of recession. I do not know anyone uh, that I meet who is sane and, and not in an institution who doesn't see this as a problem. And I cannot find any particular group, apart from the government itself, that has a huge objection where policy changes like this to be introduced. Is there an, a lobby group, an interest group, a power group in our society that is opposing these sensible solutions but has just been very quiet about it? Oh, no, I don't think so. I think you just have to put it down to incompetence. Um, you know, everybody can see that we have a problem and we have a problem um, that we've had since we, we closed the borders. Um, and I think one of the big issues is if we don't make these changes now, and we keep fluttering around, we'll fall behind the rest of the world further and further. Because if you just look at um, basic statistics that are coming out between us and Australia, Australia who opened their borders far earlier than we did, they have uh, around 38% of their international students already coming back. We are only around 5%. Yeah. So we don't have those people coming back through our borders. And if you think of the migration levels, we're only at half the migration that we had pre-COVID. Australia has already gone over 100%. They're already increasing. Uh, and we've, we've spent so much time being idle uh, that we can't dilly-dally. We just have to open up to the people who want to come and work here. All right. So there's no question here that this is unions wanting to keep, you know, wages for their members high um, and protect their shops. This You're just saying it's just a government that, fails to see the problem or fails to act appropriately in response to that problem? Well, I think they've got their eye off the ball. I mean, they've got so many agendas um, within government at the moment uh, that they're not focused on how we can actually grow our economy. And I think we have a real issue there where if you are an international uh, migrant wanting to look where you're going around the world, why would you want to come to a country where the government doesn't take the economy seriously, where it doesn't actually question how we can get better productivity levels? And there's another area that I don't think has really been touched on yet, is as a migrant, you're going to be looking at the wage levels of a country, uh, whether the country is aspirational, uh, but also whether or not you fit with the culture. Um, and I look at the co-government angle that the government is pushing through at the moment, and I seriously question if we go down that path, whether or not somebody wanting to come to our country versus any other country around the world would start to question whether they want to raise their kids in a country where they might not have equal rights than other kids. Wow, well, OK, that's anything. a nice segue. I'm also going to ask you too, if we want more workers and we want to free up our workforce, um, and I don't know, there'll be a lot of these people listening and calling into this radio show between 9 and 12 today, um, those who lost their jobs because of mandates in the health service and law enforcement and in other areas. And I understand, for example, that Countdown Supermarkets are still imposing a vaccine mandate for their workers. Is it time to get rid of mandates and get some people who were done out of work or done out of jobs during the pandemic uh, to get them back in the workforce? Oh, yeah. I mean, the ACT Party never agreed with the vaccine mandates en masse. Uh, but, and I've been advocating for many, many months that we should remove the mandates uh, for the health sector um, because of my health portfolio. But I think there is a role for businesses to assess their own risks and create their own rules. Um, so I do agree with businesses wanting to create their own rules based on their own risk assessments. But I, I do agree that the mandates should have been dropped a, a long, long time ago. OK, anything... I mean, obviously, as a politician, you have a relative amount of influence, even though you're in opposition. What do you think the person in the street can do to convince the government to take more urgent action on the issue of immigration and therefore worker availability? Well, the best thing uh, that a person on the street can do is vote with their feet. 
I mean, the only way that you can get rid of incompetence is by voting it out. Um, and if you don't like the trajectory of the government where they're not focused on the economy, they're not focused on productivity, um, and they're not focused on the real needs of New Zealanders, uh, there is an alternative. And ACT puts forward many, many policy uh, documents, and we're going to be releasing even more policy documents about what we want to do in the next government. And immigration is right on the top of our list. Uh, the election is only a year away, and I'm starting to get that feeling. Uh, I have to thank you for joining us, the Deputy Leader of the ACT Party, not the Immigration Spokesperson, Brooke Van Velden. Uh, thank you for that take. That is